I work in the grocery business, as you know, and this is a, uh, you know, the kickoff of the summer season, so to speak. But most, to most folks, it means no more than a time to go to the lake, go fishing, uh, do something like that, and, and forget why we have this Memorial Day. And it's to honor those that have given their life for our freedom, for our country, uh, the blood that has been shed in our, you know, for our I work in the grocery business, as you know, and this is a, uh, you know, the kickoff of the summer season, so to speak. But most, to most folks, it means no more than a time to go to the lake, go fishing, uh, do something like that, and, and forget why we have this Memorial Day. And it's to honor those that have given their life for our freedom, for our country, uh, the blood that has been shed in our you know, for our freedom is tremendous. Uh, you know, the, the Civil War was fought, and it was the bloodiest, the greatest loss of men in, in America's history, and battle was lost in the Civil War. And I have the totals, and I'm going to read them all to you today. And bes be between that, the rest of the wars combined that were fought for the liberties of this country do not equal that of the Civil War. But it's been... Thousands and thousands of men that have died uh, to secure my right to stand here. And I don't take that lightly at all. I, I don't take that lightly. I'm proud for those that have served in the military. And uh, if I meet someone that is in service and I can tell by their uniform or something, I try my best to go to them and thank them for serving. Uh, whether or not they ever see combat or not, it doesn't matter. I, but I thank those that are serving in our military today, and I hold them in high regard. Now, Hebrews chapter number 11 speaks of some more heroes, uh, heroes of the faith. And I want to, again, I, I, I just want to give you a few things uh, this morning. Uh, those who died for our religious rights and our religious freedoms are those that have given their life for this great nation but there are those heroes of faith in Hebrews chapter number 11.
that died for their faith and died in their faith, died believing. The Old Testament saints died looking forward to the time when Christ would come. Amen. I get real excited when I get to thinking about the cross and how that all those Old Testament saints died looking for the time that that supreme sacrifice would come and be made for their sins. And you and I look back to the cross of Calvary where we recognize and realize by the Word of God that Christ came and gave His life for you and I that we might have the freedom one day to, die, to go home to be with the Lord, whether by the way of the grave or by the rapture. Christ died for my freedom. Hebrews chapter number 11, let me read you just a few verses here. Verse number, starting with verse number 1. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, by what? By faith, by it, the elders obtain a good report. When you leave this world, are you going to obtain a good report because of your faith? Lord, help us that we would leave this world being noted for our faith in the Lord Jesus. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you again for this opportunity to call upon thee. We thank you for the Word of God. Blessed, I pray. Lord, help us to rightly divide the Word of truth and say nothing contrary to thy will. God, we thank you for the freedom we have today. In Jesus' name, amen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. What you believe and what you know in your heart about God, you know it all through faith in Christ and in the Word of God. Amen. Without faith, you have no belief. Without faith in Christ, you'll die and go to hell without God. Without faith in Him, friend, you have no hope of heaven, no hope of eternity with God. Amen. But with faith, amen, we have hope. We have that blessed knowledge and that blessed hope, that blessed uh, thought that one day we're going to go to be with the Lord. The Bible goes on to give a list of men and, and uh, you know, that lived in the faith. Abraham, Enoch, Noah, Isaac, all of these people that you read on through this chapel, on through this chapter, uh, Moses and Jacob and uh, the many others that we read about him. We come down to verse number 32 and we read of these other heroes of faith. Many times we read this chapter and we get to this last part where not a lot of names are mentioned and we'll stop right there. But let's read this about these others that are mentioned in Scripture. And what shall I more say for the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and Jephthah, of David also and Samuel and of the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the alien. Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepted deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourging, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment, they were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the swords. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and in caves. And these all having obtained a good report, how? Through faith, received not the promise, God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. These heroes of faith, these people of faith that did what they did because they were looking for the coming of Christ as their sacrifice. And I want to give you again three things this morning about those who died for our freedom. Those that died for our freedom, as we mentioned those, Frank did, those back there in our cemetery. I walked around there before church and I looked and I I wondered how many of those men, you know, had died in service or, or uh, you know, they've been placed out there and they didn't die in service, but they, uh, you know, for memorial to them, amen, we honor them. And I wondered how many of those men back there had given their life so that I can stand here today. 
You ever think about that? Do we ever get past? And I, you know, I, I've wondered. I drove by the VA hospital yesterday, and they were putting flags up on those. And I thought, you know, th- this is important. This is important. This day is an important day for America. This is important. We don't. I don't have the right to stand here that somebody didn't die for that right for me. Somebody didn't serve for that right. Somebody didn't go to battle for me. Whether they give the ultimate sacrifice or whether, I don't care if they mop the floor. Amen. They did it that I might have some freedom. And I look in our country today and I see those freedoms slowly slipping away from me. But until they're all gone, I'm going to stand and proclaim the word of God. Amen. Because I have the right. I have the freedom. Those that died for our freedom. And of all those that died for our freedom, I begin to think, I wonder how many of these men died for freedom that died lost without God. Did you ever think about that? Of all the thousands of men that have died through the history of this great United States of America, and I am proud to be an American, by the way, don't e- hey, don't ever go stomping on a flag around me. If you've got the right to do that, I've got the right to bear arms. Amen. Amen. Listen to me, my friend. I love this great country, but I don't take it lightly that there have men that have died for my freedom that have died lost without God and went to hell. We don't like to think that. That's not popular that we think that someone would die on the... And I'm going to give you an illustration here in just a moment of people that would die on the battlefield fighting for my right to stand and preach the gospel and many of them have never re- had rejected the gospel and died lost without God. That's pitiful, isn't it? But they still, even though that was the case, I still hold them in high regard for those that died even without God. I had a great friend in the previous church that I pastored. His name was Raymond Raymond Sluter. Raymond was a hero of World War II. Raymond was on, uh, he was on uh, the beach. What's the name? Somebody give me. Gone, Normandy. And he was there on that beach. He landed on that beach. He gave me testimony. He didn't talk about it a lot, but he liked me and I liked him. We become great friends. And I, he would talk to me once in a while. He said, Preacher, it was a bloody disaster. He said, My buddies were killed all around me. And he said, but I, I landed on that beach, and he said the water was bloody with the, with the blood of my friends, and he said they were mowing us down, and he said I dug in, and he said I fought, and he said we finally gained ground. And he spent the rest, until the war was over, uh, he was with uh, uh, General Patton, he was with him when the war ended, he was serving with him. And as Brother Raymond tell me times when he fought, he said, Preacher, he said, one day I fought for three days without sleep, without rest, because it was fight or die. He said, I couldn't. He said, there was no one there but me and and my group. He said, we had to fight or die. He said, for three days and nights, he said, we fought without any relief. But he said, God helped us. He told me of He said, Preacher, three times I was captured, but God had a way for me to escape. He said one time he he and his buddies were, were, uh, the the Germans spotted them and they were trying to find a place to hide so they could, you know, so they could find, uh, you know, a a place to dig in. And they spotted them and they they were coming after them, shooting, and they dove into a cellar. He said he landed in a, in a, Sailor full of potatoes, he and his other buddy. And he said, the Germans came by, and he said one of them pulled a pin on a grenade and throwed it in that cellar where they were at. He said he saw it coming and dove behind a big pile of potatoes. And he survived. And if I'm not mistaken, he was the only one out of that group that survived because he saw it and just happened to be able to get out, get out of the way while everybody... And they were all killed except Brother Raymond. 
And I'm not sure, maybe one other fellow. But he also said that one time he was hiding, or, or not, you know, they were just trying to find a place uh, to get where they could fight back. And, he, and he, they were outnumbered, and he, he went into a, another basement. And he said he got in there, and he said there was no way out. And he said, they had me, preacher. He said, they had me captured. And he said, there was nothing to do. And he said, he, he was looking around, and he said, he looked back, and said, there was a lady standing back there saying, come on, come on. And he said, they ran back there to where she was at, and there was a secret door. And they escaped. I want to tell you something, friend. That's a work of God. And I'm going to tell you why in a minute. That's a work of God. And then another time he, he was telling about another instance where the same thing happened. But God, God let him escape. Now he was a purple heart. He had a purple heart. He was injured in the war. But he came back home. The war was over. When it ended, he came back home. He said, preacher, we like to froze to death in the hurricane forest. He said, it's 40 below zero. He said, we like to froze to death. I want to tell you something, friend. This wasn't no little wimpy man. This was a man. Amen. And he did it all because he loved this great country. He did it because he loved the United States of America. And guess what? He said, preacher, I was over there fighting, and he said I was lost without God. He got saved when he came back home. His, his wife had prayed for him while he was off, and he got back home, and he got saved, and got right with the Lord. And he, he died, and we buried him here just a few years back. And uh, he died in the faith fighting for what you and I have today. Now, I'm sure you've got stories. That's just one of mine, of people that I have known. And I'm sure you've got stories of people that have died fighting for the faith. But many of them died lost without God. And for them, I still salute because they died for my freedom. So we see those who sacrificed and died for my freedom... And I see in Hebrews chapter 11 those that sacrificed themselves for my faith. They sacrificed for my faith. And you read through all of this. You read through all of those that, that uh, the Bible lists as heroes of faith. Not perfect men, not perfect women, but yet they died in their faith believing. Looking for the day when Christ would come to pay their sin debt on the cross of Calvary. All of these, as you look at them and as you read them, and I challenge you to go home and read of these heroes of faith and study of them, that they all died in the faith. Listen, what's going to be written on your tombstone? What's going to be written on your tombstone? What if, that, whatever that word is. What's going to be written on your tombstone? He died in the faith. She died in the faith. She died serving the Lord at home with Jesus. Is, it, is your Listen, I want my tombstone. If I live that long, I want my headstone to be a testimony of the Lord Jesus. Amen? I'd like for it to say, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Hallelujah. Then if somebody walks by my tombstone and reads that, and I'm dead and gone. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. They might think, I wonder what that's about. And go find somebody to explain it to them. Get right with God. Amen. Friend, our faith, our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, these heroes of faith in the Scripture, my salvation is paid for by a great price. I was reading some in the Fox's Book of Martyrs. Listen, we've had it easy here in this country as far as persecution of Christians is concerned. I don't know that the time's not coming where we may face some of the same things that's going on in the rest of the world right here in the United States. Don't say it'll never happen. Don't stick your head so far in the sand that you say it'll never happen. Friend, we're on the verge, and if God don't do something, if we don't stand up as Americans and fight for what we believe in and for what's right and for what freedoms we've got left, if we don't sound our voice for freedom, we sure as believers may be facing what some of those in the Fox's Book of Martyrs face. I read of one <coughs> in there that was because he would not recant the name of the Lord Jesus. 
because he would not deny his faith in the Lord Jesus, he was condemned, had every opportunity to say, I renounce Christ, I don't believe in Christ. God help us to have that kind of faith, amen. God help us to have that kind of courage if it comes to us. He knowing what was going to take place. He knowing what was going to be his end. He said, I will not recant the name of Christ. And so they took him to the state that was prepared for him. Listen, I won't get too graphic here, but what they did to him when he was tied at that stake was not very comforting. And because the children here, and I don't want them to get this image in their mind, what they did was not very comforting. And so you yourself can read it yourself and know that what he suffered at that stake was not a nice thing. And yet one of the men that was going to do that, he came to him and said, I don't want to do this. Please forgive me. I don't want to do this. And that man, I, I don't recall his name, but the one being martyred said, come here. And that fellow that was going to have to do the persecuting went over to him and he kissed him on the cheek and he said, I forgive you. Oh, what grace. Oh, what courage. Oh, what boldness. As we remember, Christ said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they do. Listen, there have been many that have died. Through the dark ages, many were persecuted for their faith, and many would not recant the name of the Lord Jesus. And friend, I believe they'll be in the heroes, chapter 11, those that cannot be mentioned. And then last of all, and I'm moving right along, we'll be through here in just a minute. Those who sacrifice for our freedom, those who sacrifice for our faith, and he who sacrificed himself for our future. And I speak of no other than the Lord Jesus Christ who sacrificed himself that I might have a future in heaven with him. Amen. Now, why all the long faces this morning? I want to know. I'm looking through a crowd of people this morning that some of you look like, will you let us go to the house? Why are you so excited? I'm excited because I'm born again in the grace of God. I'm going to live as long as God in heaven lives. I'm going to be alive through all eternity. No matter what this life down here hands me, amen, I'll live forever with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Why? Because of he who gave himself for my future. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He who knew no sin sacrificed himself so that I, a sinner, might accept the one that knew no sin, might accept him as my Savior, and when I leave this world, I'm going to heaven to be with him forever. Amen. Let me tell you something, friend. Our heroes in this country that died for our nation died heroes. Those that served and died natural death, they go as heroes, in my opinion. But I'll tell you something. My hero is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one that paid the ultimate sacrifice that I might live forever with him. Even in spite of my sin, even in spite of my wickedness, God loved me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, should not perish. Listen, should not perish, but have everlasting life. There is no reason that anyone should die in their sins. There is no reason that anyone should go to hell without God because they should not perish. The Bible tells me they should not perish. He died that all men should come to repentance. If you're here today lost without God, why in the world are you going to go to hell? What in this world is worth you going to hell over if you're lost without God? And if you're saved and a child of God, why do you not rejoice that your name's written in the Lamb's book of life? Hallelujah. Amen. I'm saved. Glory. Amen. Amen. Maybe I'll wake us up.
Why am I saved for all eternity? Why did God in heaven die on the cross for me? And how did he save me? Let me tell you, he paid my sin debt on the cross. He's, he made a way for me to have a future with him because he took my sin upon him and bore my sin on the cross of Calvary. He accepted the persecution and the, and the sacrifice for sin. He paid that I might be forever with him. The most powerful words, and me and the son-in-law was discussing it even last night, and it got a hold of me even once again. The most powerful words that had been spoken in the, in the entire history of mankind was those words spoken on the cross by Christ. Amen? Christ in his weakened estate, Christ in his body, human body, fleshly body, that had been beaten beyond recognition, that the blood and the water had flowed from his side, that his hands and his feet had been that had been uh, pierced and nailed to the cross of Calvary by the body that had been beaten and beaten with, so that his insides and his bones were showing through to everyone that looked upon him. That same Jesus in his weakened estate when the job was done, hallelujah, well, glory, when he looked down through the ages of time and saw every sin ever committed by mankind, when he had sacrificed his blood that all men's sin might be forgiven, when he made a possibility so that my sins could be paid for, when all of that was said and done, when God of heaven, his Father, had even turned his back on the Lamb of God, when it was all said and done, Jesus looked to heaven in Mark chapter 15 in verse number 37, and Jesus cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. A loud voice, a man beast. Listen, I've seen some men and women in their die, dying deathbed, and their last words were feeble, and you could not hear them because of the weak, weakness of the body. But Christ being God in the flesh, amen, he paid the sacrifice with that earthly body. But in that godly form, in that heavenly form, when it was done, when it was finished, when it was over with, the words he said was this, John 19, verse 30. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. Oh, no, 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 my friend. His last dying words were not, it's finished. As a dying man might say, but his last words on the cross of Calvary. You've heard this before, but let me repeat it to you again. Let me refresh your memory on what Christ said, the last words he said, the three greatest words in all the history of mankind is this, it is finished, amen. And he bowed his head and committed his spirit to the Lord. It's finished. What's finished? My freedom, my future was paid for on the cross of Calvary. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left the crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Oh, friend, we sing that song, we think about that song, and it has more meaning to me today than ever before. Jesus paid it all. Friend, if you're here this morning, let me say, Jesus paid it all for you. If you're lost to that God, Jesus paid it all. Everybody bow your head just for a moment. No one looking around. I want to refer to someone here this morning and say, Preacher, I've never been saved by the grace of God.